Hey guys, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be talking about stoichiometry. It's... Hey, welcome back. Alright, so we're going to be talking about what is quite possibly the coolest sounding word in all of chemistry, which is stoichiometry, right? It's just so much fun to say, right? Stoichiometry. Well, the first question obviously is, so what does it even mean? All right, well, stoichio literally means element, and metry means measure. So stoichiometry, as a literal definition, means the measure of elements. Now, what does that mean for actually what we are doing? Well, the way that chemists use stoichiometry is a way to compare uh, elements and compounds to each other within a chemical reaction so that we know if I have this much of this particular element how much product is going to be made you know and sort of so forth okay so let me show you some examples um, now obviously behind me what I've got here is another uh, version of the Molar Express um, this one is, is similar okay it's similar concept of the train track meaning you can't skip steps as you go through it the main difference for this one, however, is that this one only goes left to right. Okay, this is a one-way track. So let me kind of show you the, the stations here that we've got. So over here, I'm <laughs> trying to get out of the way here. So we've got mass one, moles number one, moles number two, and then mass number two. Okay, so number one is referring to the substance that is given to you in the question which means that no matter what, you are either going to start at mass number one or moles number one. Okay, you don't have a choice about that. You are always gonna start with either grams or moles of whatever the question gives you, okay? The number two here is referring to the substance that the question is asking for. It's what you are going to. So you are either going to convert into moles or grams of that second substance. All right, so you're either going to start at mass one or moles one, and then you're going to end at either moles two or mass two. Now, between mass one and moles one, and then moles two and mass two, right, we've got the molar mass, which is actually nothing new. It's the same molar mass conversion that we used in the, the with the last molar express. The actual only new thing, so when you really get down to it, the only stoichiometry part is this right here, going from moles one to moles two using the balanced equation. Now what does that mean? Well, let me, let me show you. All right, so I have a sample <coughs> equation right here. This is the combustion of ethane, right? And you can see it's already balanced, okay? So let's say you have, I don't know, I'm totally making this up here. Um, let's say you've got uh, 3.74 moles of ethane, the C2H6, and we want to know, okay, well, how much water is going to be produced, right? So we've got 3.74 moles of, uh, of ethane, and we're going to figure out how many moles of water this is, okay? So this is a moles one to moles two conversion so, like always, we, we take our given, we put it over one, all right? And since moles of ethane is on top, we automatically know that it's gonna go on the bottom here. And then since I'm looking for moles of water, moles of water will go on top. And then I'm just gonna come to my balanced equation here, I'm gonna pick out those coefficients, and that's what's gonna plug in here. So for moles of water, you can see that there is a six right here. So there are six moles of water, and there are two moles of ethane, like so. And so and then I'm gonna multiply 3.74 times six divided by two, okay? So when it says balanced equation here for the stoichiometry part, all you are doing is quite literally taking the numbers straight from the balanced equation and just plugging them in, okay? That's stoichiometry, okay? Even if, for example, let's say um, that you have, um, I don't know, 
0.24 grams of ethane. And then I want to know how many moles of water that is. That's not really changing anything, okay? Because I'm going to go from mass number one to moles number one using our molar mass, which is the exact same thing that we just did in all the previous calculations. So I'm actually not really adding anything new here. Okay, so if I've got grams of C2H6 on top and grams of C2H6 goes on the bottom with moles of C2H6 on the top. Okay, and then so where do we get our numbers? From the molar mass, which is found on the periodic table, right? Now for moles, it's always one mole, right? Because it's grams per mole. And then so carbon has a mass of 12, well there's two of them, so that's 24. Hydrogen has a mass of one, well there's six, so 24 plus six is 30, that is 30 grams. I am now at moles number one, and now I go to moles number two, and it's actually the exact same setup as, uh, we, as I just showed you, right? So moles C2H6 goes on, on the bottom with moles of water on the top, and then I take my balance equation, six over two. And then now it's 38.24 divided by 30 times six divided by two. All right, that's stoichiometry right there, and that's kind of just how to use the Molar Express here and how to figure it out. Now in the next video, I'm gonna give you some actual um, examples, and I will go through the process of calculating everything out, and then I'll give you some more examples for you to try out on your own. All right, if you have any further questions about stoichiometry, just in general, you know, as to what it actually is, uh, please comment below, or you can send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com, and I would love to get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button, and uh, join us on this adventure known as chemistry. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later.